What's up Guardians, Profane here, thanks for checking out the video. This week, the Glassway Nightfall makes its way back into the Grandmaster rotation, and today I'll be going over tips, tricks, and workarounds to make completing this Grandmaster a lot easier for those out there who are still trying to acquire or guild their Conqueror titles in Season of the Risen. Now before we get started, if you enjoy today's video and find it helpful, be sure to leave a like below and if it's your first time visiting the channel, hitting that subscribe button would also be greatly appreciated. Outside of the Light Blade, which was supposed to be this week's Grandmaster, the Glassway is one of the more difficult Grandmasters this season to complete, and much of the challenge comes in the boss encounter, where there's alternating waves of champions and wyverns, with the big and little Hydra bosses wandering around the map. But before we get into the boss encounter, let's take it back a step and talk about the opening phases of this strike and what loadouts you should consider using to be more efficient. And then we'll take a look at all of the workarounds and glitches for the boss encounter. Now, the Glassway Grandmaster contains anti-barrier and overload champions. There will be a lot of void and solar damage coming your way, so I highly suggest to equip elemental resistance mods and run max resilience. You're going to be facing off against enemies using all three elemental shield types. So right off the bat, the Arbalist will be a great asset here. It would also serve you well to have a teammate running the Divinity and even a Wither Horde to quickly clear out adds and take on those overloads. While I'm sure many will want to throw on the Funnel Web, which is perfectly fine, you'll want to make sure that you have something with range as many of your engagements are going to be from a distance, especially on the bridge. Warlocks will find Stasis Turret builds far more effective than Well of Radiance, which also means Aegir's Scepter will be an amazing choice to keep your enemies slowed and frozen. Turrets will play an important role not only in the final boss encounter, but on the capture point at the bridge phase. Tossing turrets onto the high rises will keep snipers and shanks at bay, giving you a better chance at picking them off without taking a lot of damage. As you capture the zone, waves of enemies will spawn in every 20 to 30 percent until it's done. So you will want to complete this in phases, finish off each wave of enemies before progressing the zone. Once reaching the boss room, you'll find a few out of the map spots that you can utilize to hide out and even deal damage to enemies. As you first enter the boss room, on the left side wall, there's a small hole that leads to a large cavity within the structure. From here, you can avoid incoming damage while also luring enemies below to pick them off. Depending on the boss's positioning, you can even damage him from this space with anti-barrier weapons. On the opposing side of the map, there are two safe spaces that you can retreat to. While there are more fitted for Master Mode here, they can still be achieved within Grandmaster. The first is the Cargo Bin, hanging in the center of the room on the right. You can quickly retreat to this small cubby space to avoid enemy fire, but watch out as you can still take splash damage here. So this is not ideal for being a permanent base of operations. But in a quick pinch, if you've got to retreat back to the other side, this is an ideal place to go. In the back corner of the same room, there's a small sliver of space that you can jump through to get behind the map. You'll want to watch out for the radio larium here, as it will definitely hurt you. But from here, you can get under the map as shown in the video. Once under the map, you'll need to slide to get through the narrow path. The positioning is a little finicky here, but in the right spots, you're able to deal damage out to the nearby enemies and bosses. This boss encounter can get dicey quick, especially when the Minotaur and Wyverns rush in. Whether you are holding down on the left or the right sides of the room, I find it immensely beneficial to keep distance between your teammates, but still stay close enough together to be able to dish out team fire. 
The only thing worse than one death in this boss fight is two simultaneous ones. As mentioned earlier, Turrence and Wither Horde are great for taking on enemies that will rush in. Taking time to recharge your supers in between the waves will also be an important process in actually completing this Grandmaster. Don't rule out the anarchy either. This exotic grenade launcher still puts out some insane work and is just as effective against the Minotaur and Wyvern as the Wither Horde is. You'll be getting double rewards all week long in Nightfall. So whether you're farming out adept weapons, exotics, or ascendant shards, this will be a great week to jump in and take on the Glassway Grandmaster. I wish you all the best and luck this week. Let me know how your runs are going and if you've got any additional tips and tricks to complete the Glassway Grandmaster, be sure to let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed today's video and found it helpful, be sure to help support the channel below by hitting the like button along with the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Both are greatly appreciated, and until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane wishing you some happy hunting.